My name is Elton and this is a mini-series on my channel where I'll be taking a look at artifact sets that have similar effects and uses, specifically for characters who can utilize them well, but have to go through some sort of constant debate of which one to choose. I hope to shed some light on how these sets differ and whether the trade-offs that each of them have are actually worth it, as well as how units can actually proc these effects properly. However, like always, I have to give a disclaimer. I'm not here to calculate percentages or crunch the numbers on any character's damage output. I am only here to explain how these artifacts work, how well they work in the current state of the game, and how well these effects can be taken advantage of. I am not here to shame, humiliate, or insult anyone who chooses one set over another for their builds. I also want to say that I do compile my information from the most up-to-date guides from the Kaching Mains website, as they have a plethora of very helpful information, so if you're wondering where I got all this knowledge, I got it from there. Now, with all that said and done, welcome to Artifact and Tagney. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different as this is a special episode of Artifact Antagony. This episode is being split into two parts due to me discussing four artifact sets this time. So the first half of the video will be about Anmo sets, and then the second part, which hopefully will be out soon, will be about Geo sets. I'm doing this since these four sets are pretty special and can all relate to one another in one sort of way, being that Anmo and Geo have been mainly dubbed as the support elements of the game. And since I'll be focusing on Animo, I'll have to also discuss the mechanics of Animo, how essential it is to the game, and how it evolved throughout the game so far. But before that, let's discuss the two sets. Ivredis and Venera is an artifact set that I'm pretty sure we're all very well familiar with by now. His two-piece effect grants a 15% Animo damage bonus, while its four-piece effect increases swirl damage by 60%, while simultaneously decreasing the elemental resistance of the enemy who had the element swirled off of them by 40% for 10 seconds. And Desert Pavilion Chronicle, also known as DPC, which is how I will be referring it from now on, also grants a 15% animal damage bonus with its 2-piece effect, while its 4-piece effect increases normal attack speed by 10% and increases normal, charged, and plunging attack damage by 40% for 15 seconds after a charge attack hits an opponent. So Animo is a support element that has been used in almost every team since the beginning of the game, and it has long solidified itself as a very simple and easy element to utilize in doing so. This is due how it can work with Viridescent in a very simple way. When the equipped character swirls either Pyro, Cryo, Hydro, or Electro off an enemy, they can easily decrease that opponent's resistance to that element. Not to mention, this can happen with more than one element simultaneously, like how Electro and Hydro can exist at once on an enemy, meaning that applying Animal would swirl both Electro and Hydro, resulting in a dual elemental resistance decreases. Additionally, this resistance shred effect can only work when the swirl is caused when the character equipped with the set is on This is immensely valuable to so many teams, as it allows for an overall and very consistent higher damage output. As for DPC, this artifact set is a unique take on buffing Animo, specifically this element's main DPS units. This artifact set only really fully benefits one character and is ultimately regarded as a very interesting alternative option for many other characters that aren't even Animo. This is due to the fact that it increases the damage of normal charge and plunging attacks so much that it can be considered worth it, and that is in addition to the increased normal attack speed for characters who rely on that heavily. However, this is also more of a meme, if anything substantial, for characters who aren't animal that can use this set, and only goes to show that DPC hasn't really made much of an impact ever since its release. Now, for the characters, I'll be going in chronological order of release this time. This is due to how Anima has changed significantly over time, from being just a support element to being somewhat of quite a formidable form of DPS. So the first animal units in the game were Sucrose, Gene, and Venti. All of these three were pretty easy to discern which set is better suited for them. Sucrose does the best with Viridescent due to the fact that she can be used as a perfect animal driver to shred elemental resistances and impart additional elemental mastery onto teammates. Being a catalyst, she has the easiest access to animo, so swirling is definitely made easy, especially with the numerous amount of off-field sub-DPS units and support units that we have in the game that have great synergy with her. Additionally, DPC doesn't really make sense for her being damage-wise. While Sucrose is a more support-geared unit, with her only main DPS type role being as an on-field driver, most of her damage actually comes from her skill and her burst, not her normal and charge attacks, so buffing them with the DPC's 4-piece effect just doesn't really make any sense. 
Venti's also another character who definitely belongs on Viridescent. His massive burst that pulls opponents in is an easy way to apply a ton of animo. Additionally, his rotation is usually using his burst right after his skill in order to cancel his skill's long animation. The strategy allows you to swirl elements with the skill so Viridescent can proc and then go right into his burst, which would take a bit of time to infuse, and by then Venti won't be able to be on field to proc the effect. You could decide to play him with his charge attacks to proc DPC, but ultimately this is very unproductive as you would be playing an archer with non-AoE charge attacks. Not to mention, him on a support build with Viridescent can serve a stronger and better purpose than a struggle build like T DPC. As for Jean, most of her damage isn't in her normal and charge attacks, or her plunging either. At the beginning of Genshin, Hoyo did try to market her as a weird sort of physical DPS with her signature weapon, Aquila Favonia, which would mainly make her deal physical damage when she would push enemies up into the air with her skill by holding it, and then have the enemies fall down from the sky, taking fall damage, which would result in the physical damage. Which also isn't something that DPC can buff. Viridescent is definitely better suited, especially since how she has a low cooldown skill to quickly swirl elements and then swap off. Now, Xiao is an interesting case, as he was the first attempt to make a DPS of the element that dealt a raw animal damage. Unlike his other two counterparts in Liga, who already had four-piece sets made for them, Xiao's best build relied on a two-piece of Viridescent and a two-piece of any of the 18% attack sets. However, later on, a new tailored set, Vermilion Hereafter, was made for him. The set fit perfectly with his HP drain mechanic from his burst and helped him deal more damage. But then DPC popped up as an Animo DPS set, making things a little bit more interesting. Putting aside Vermilion, Shao could proc DPC's effects by simply activating his burst and then doing a charge attack and then going straight into his plunge attacks. However, this is a little bit wonky and is considered conditional in practice. Again, against a single target or fewer enemies, this set on Shao could actually perform quite well, landing it right before Vermilion. But in multi-target situations with more enemies, it actually becomes less consistent. Not to mention that Xiao can't even take advantage of the increased normal attack speed either. However, Xiao is definitely not meant for a swirl and doesn't help with reaction damage, so in the end, DPC does win out on Xiao instead of Viridescent. Moving overseas, Kazo is definitely not someone you would want to place on DPC. His entire kit is based on using his elemental mastery to swirl elements to give a massive elemental damage bonus to his teammates, and using Viridescent to also decrease enemies' resistance to said elements is like the icing on the cake. We go up while they go down. Literally. And no, his C6 where he gets his animal infusion does not make it a good idea for him to be put on DPC. Now, Sayu and Heizo are two characters that I'll be lumping together, as they both have something in common, and that's their main source of damage. Both Heizo and Sayu deal the most damage from their skills. Sayu is an animo healer like Jean, and she usually is meant to be swapped out just like her predecessor, using her skill quickly and then throwing down her burst and just swapping out to your main DPS. However, there is an option to play her as an Animo Driver, where you can use her skill by holding it and essentially barrel roll around at an increased speed to deal Animo damage while having sub-DPS and support units that can apply elements off-field. This means DPC is definitely not the right choice, as Sayu isn't really meant to do damage, and the way she even does damage when you choose to play her like that is not either a normal charged or plunging attack. And if you are using her like an Animo Driver, then Viridescent should be placed on her. Hazel also ends up being the same way as his skill deals a huge hit of AoE animo damage and has a stacking mechanic that buffs it even more. Hazel would seem like he should be on DPC due to the fact that he seems like a more animo DPS option as a counterpart to Sucrose, but his damage isn't focused in normal charged or plunging attacks. Ultimately, his better option would be a full Viridescent or a two-piece of Viriana two-piece attack. Now, Wanderer is the character that DPC was made for. It works perfectly with his mechanics of increasing his normal attack seed since he gets a bonus for that inherently with his kit when he enters a skill state, specifically for damage. Also, his charge attacks receive this bonus as well. Regardless, Wanderer is an animo hyper carry just like Xiao, but his way of dealing damage happens to coincide perfectly with the animo main DPS set. And as for Farazan, she is not meant to be on DPC or Viridescent. This is because she's a dedicated animo support for animo DPSs. Farazan can increase animal damage bonus, shred animal resistance, and even increase animal damage dealt from other teammates based on her attack, specifically her base attack. Her burst seems to behave something like Sucrose, Kazuas, or Venti's, but doesn't absorb elements like theirs, meaning Viridescent is kind of useless on her. And if she's meant to support DPSs like Wanderer and Shao, then swirling elements at all isn't really needed or meant to happen. Her best sets would either be Noblesse, if that isn't already on another teammate like Bennett, 
or emblem of severed fate to account for her terrible energy issues. And if you do have her at C6, then Tenacity of the Milith is a very viable possible option. And we finally have our last Annabelle character for now, Lynette. Generally speaking, her better set would be Viridescent due to the general support that it can bring to the team. But once she hits C6, she can gain an animal infusion that is extremely consistent. This means that she gains the option to be played as a main DPS. Her better set to do so would be the 4-piece set of March House Say Hunter, due to her skill and how it can work by healing her and then taking away her HP. However, DPC is still definitely viable and falls just behind March House Say. So with Lynette, her best set is definitely depending on the situation as a whole, specifically what constellation you have and sort of what playstyle you want to play her. So we can see that the supportive capabilities of Animo have truly won out. Having raw Animo damage isn't that useful to the overall purpose of what Animo can do, and specifically what role it's supposed to serve. And it's clearly true with the artifacts as well. Viridescent still stands as one of the most valuable sets ever since its arrival into the game way back when. And as her DPC, only one character can actually make use of it the best, being the one that it was made for. And as much as I would like to say that there are characters in the future who will probably use DPC more, I'm not sure that that is completely true, or that even is going to happen, given animal main DPSs don't really seem to be a priority, or much of a popular choice that Hoyo would make for DPSs. But yeah, this was uh, the first part of the Artifact Antagony special for Episode 4, and I'm, I hope that you can look forward to the next half of it. I uh, recently bought some digital stickers for video editing, which you may have noticed. So if you see that my editing style has kind of changed a bit and kind of been, uh, kind of has been a bit more jazzed up, uh, that's what that is. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, so yeah, you already know button to press if you want to see more on a regular basis. And if you have something to say, I can only hope that it's nice. Thank you. Bye.